Yeah, it's that time of the week again. We're going to hate watch The Walking Dead. Just how is Rick going to screw up this week? Rick's first fuck up this week is right at the beginning of the episode with him talking to Negan. For some reason. What do you need to talk to Negan for? He is your prisoner. He is utterly at your mercy. He can do nothing unless you interact with him. Then he can get in your head, Rick. You fucking idiot. And he can start sowing seeds of doubt. Because that's literally all he has the power to do at the moment. When it finally goes to shit. And it will. You make sure you come back and you tell me all about that day too. The only reason that Rick is even talking to Negan is to rub it in his fucking face. It's purely for Rick's own personal satisfaction. Because that's the kind of prick that Rick is. He can't actually just win and move on. Oh no, he has to win and then continually rub it in the face of the person he has defeated. But does it hurt Negan? No, because Negan sat there planning for when he can get out. All Rick is doing is helping Negan by providing him with information for when his inevitable escape occurs. It's unfathomably stupid. There's a huge amount of interpersonal housekeeping in this episode, and it's really dull, and I don't really enjoy it at all in this series anymore. So, I'm just going to skip over it completely. The only key plot point from all of this was that the oil that the saviors were sending to fuel the tractor so they could grow food in the big field didn't materialise. They don't know where it went or where the people who are trafficking it went, and so now that field is going to lay unploughed. And so Maggie isn't going to send them food. This is a political problem with an obvious solution. If you have a number of hungry men who have got nothing better to do with their time, maybe they could plough the field for you. Remember Justin from last week, the saviour that Daryl was talking to like a total bitch. Justin, clean that up. How? Oh. What do you mean how? Paint over it. We just used up all the paint. Figure it out. Well, he's in some hot water this episode. They're all mending the bridge, and Justin is working alongside everyone else. When the kid whose job it is to carry water around to everyone gives him a cup of water, and apparently he is only allowed a cup of water because of the amount of water that the kid has, to get another cup of water, Justin decides to be a prick and kicks the kid to the ground. The kid uses his martial arts training to get the better of Justin, Justin gets mocked, Justin gets angry, Justin goes to attack the kid, Daryl intervenes, and a fight ensues. Rick breaks it up, and everyone goes off in a strop. There is a herd of walkers heading towards the logging operation that's fetching timber for the bridge. Instead of dispatching a team of people to go and wipe them out, they instead try to draw the walkers away from the logging site, using a coordinated series of explosives and sirens. But uh-oh, one of the sirens didn't go off, and so the herd didn't actually turn in the way they need to go, and they're going straight for the logging site. Dun dun dun! Oh no! Whatever will we do? There is a herd of zombies coming towards us. We've never dealt with one of these before. So as they're lifting a particularly large and heavy log to be transported. Oh no, walkers. Thank goodness Daryl's here and he could probably just kill this whole mob single-handedly. But no, one of the guys working panics, jumps off the top and drops the log and it crushes the gay guy's arm. And oh no, it's going to have to be amputated. It's a real shame we couldn't have just started killing zombies willy-nilly. Oh no wait, that's exactly what happens. Everyone just comes in and kills all of the zombies. In fact, it's even getting comical at this point, because Rick sees a stacked pile of logs held together by a rope. And despite the fact that he's not far away from it, instead of running over and cutting the rope, he gets his rifle and tries to shoot the rope. And when he finally does it, the logs roll down and hit every zombie in the head as they go popping their skulls like melons in what I found to be a genuinely funny scene. Look at that. All of the zombies are now dead, every single head squashed by a log. I genuinely feel bad for the special effects teams that have to work on this, because the special effects are universally pretty good in this, but the things that they have to do are so dumb. But who wants it who failed to alert the zombie mob and change their course? Oh, lo and behold, it was Justin. For some reason, the guy who's been playing up for the last two episodes has a personal beef with Daryl and has got into fistfights with him, was put in charge of signalling the zombie horde. He claims that the walkie-talkie was out of batteries, Daryl doesn't believe him and starts punching him in the face. Later on, Justin is walking past Rick and, rudely though justly, raises his grievance with Daryl assaulting him and instead of saying, 
And instead of Rick saying, well, okay, I know that you've had a problem with Daryl, but there's no particular reason to think that you're trying to get everyone killed, Rick instead says this. If I see your face again, stitches won't fix what I do to you. Justin naturally says, okay, then I'll leave, and he walks off in the middle of the night while drinking, and at the end of the episode, gets jumped by something. Rick and Daryl are amazingly annoying because they seem to be provoking this guy's reaction, and then when he starts acting out, they seem to be acting even worse to him and taking no responsibility as their position as the people in charge. His grievances are also their grievances. They need to settle his difference with other people fairly, and if his difference is with Daryl, and Daryl is the one who attacks him, on the grounds of his noggin jogging, then Justin has a legitimate grievance, and Rick should discipline Daryl. But of course, Rick can't do that, because Rick is probably the worst leader in all of history, and only maintains his position because of his loyal cadre of capos, much like Negan. But to their credit, the writers do have a character point that out during the episode. So I'll see you next week.